Hello and welcome to this channel where I talk about how to learn medicine. My name is Tom and I'm a relatively recently qualified GP with a slight obsession in how to learn medicine and actually learning medicine and teaching medicine. But if you like this video and you like this kind of content, why not hit the subscribe button and get notified when new videos come out. But uh, for now, let's just get straight into this one. So this video is really a summary of my top five tips for learning medicine. And there's so many things you need to know in medical school that you can't learn through just sitting and reading books, like communication skills and practical skills and clinical reasoning. However, these tips are really how do you get so much information that you need to know for medical school from the books into your head and into your memory so that you retain those long term. And that will really help you with practicing medicine and for passing exams. So let's get straight into it. The first tip and the first principle is number one, get straight into learning. And I really want to emphasize the importance of just getting started with learning. And in order to highlight this, I want to talk about two scenarios and two students. The first student is one that I'm gonna call the diligent student. And the second one I'm gonna call the cramming student. And let's take you the diligent student first. This is the kind of student who spends 10 hours a day seven days a week for three months in preparation for their exams. And they're always in the library, they're making notes, they're organizing their notes, they're color coding everything, they're making vast lists of all the information that they need to know for their exams. The second student, the cramming student, is the one that doesn't do anything for the whole year. They basically spend the whole time having fun and neglecting their studies. And then two weeks before the exams, they have a panic and they go into a caffeine fueled frenzy where they just spend all their time learning and cramming for the exam and then somehow they seem to do better in the exam to everybody's shock than the diligent student who spent the entire semester studying. Now of course some people are just naturally very gifted or particularly good at exams but I think there's something else going on here which is the reason why these cramming students tend to do better than the diligent student. What I think is happening is that the diligent student is spending all their time sat in the library and making perfect notes that are really well organized and color coded and cover everything on the 5,000 different topics that they've identified that could come up on the exam. But the problem with how they're working is that they never actually get around to recapping that information and actually learning it in preparation for the exam. They have a perfect ring bound set of notes that covers everything they could possibly need to know, including illustrations and things they've copied out of textbooks. But the problem is they don't actually know what's in that set of notes. So by the time they get to their exams, they don't really know any of the content that they're being asked on, even though it is in their notes. They think, well, if I only had my notes here, I'd be able to look this up really quickly. But alas, they don't have the notes in the exams. In contrast, the cramming student panics two weeks before their exams and realizes they know nothing. So they think, what do I actually need to know? What's the most basic things I need to know in order to get through these exams? So what they do is they grab somebody else's notes or they grab some information from online and they get straight into learning it. And they really concentrate on trying to get that information off the page and to stick in their brain so that when the exam comes around, they're not just floundering and without any information in their head. They're actually trying to learn things as quick as they possibly can. And then when the exam comes around, they actually know some stuff and they can actually produce that information in the exam. When we compare the actual time that these two students spent learning medicine, the first student, the diligent student, spent 700 hours making notes, making plans, organizing all of their information into a perfect set of ring bound notes but they spent zero hours actually learning that information. Then with the cramming student, they spent zero hours making notes and organizing themselves and 80 hours actually learning content. So when the exam came around, what really matters is how much content you know and how much is in your head. So the cramming student did better with their 80 hours of learning versus zero hours with the diligent student. I fell into this exact same trap in medical school in my third semester, which was on mind and movement, so covering most of neurology and musculoskeletal stuff. And I spent the entire semester 
like a 10 hours a day making amazing, beautiful mind maps and creating a wonderful set of notes for the exam. And this was some of the hardest I worked uh, for any semester in medical school. And it, I ended up with a very disappointing result. I was below average for the year and I was quite disappointed considering how much work I'd put in. So then for the fourth semester after that, I barely put in any effort during the semester, just enough to get by and crammed a bit and read some information, tried to learn just prior to the exam and ended up doing above average and doing quite well. And I was very happy with that result. So this is a perfect illustration from one person with a study of one um, of how you can go either way, spending all your time making notes or just spending a little bit of time really focusing on learning the content and doing better. So there are so many tasks that people can use to procrastinate to stop themselves from actually learning the content. And these are some things for you to watch out for. If you start saying things to yourself like, I just need to make a set of notes on this and then I can start learning it. Or I just need to make a list of all the topics that could come up and organize my time around that. Or I just need to make a revision schedule and then I'll finally be ready to actually start learning things. If you're saying these things to yourself, you may just be putting off the actual learning and the actual doing that's going to help you get through the exams. And it's just another way of procrastinating. The second principle and the second tip that I want to talk about is number two, the testing sandwich. And really this focuses on testing your knowledge, which is such an important part of learning anything. And I made a whole 24 minute video all about how the testing effect and testing your knowledge is so much more efficient and effective than reading or any other study techniques. So it's worth checking out that video if you haven't done already. But essentially what it comes down to is if you test yourself, you'll retain that information way longer and much better than just reading alone or doing some sort of passive absorption of that information. And the other good thing about testing is it provides a feedback loop. So it tells you how good you actually are at that topic and whether it's something you need to work on more or whether it's something that you can move on from and study something that you're less good at. So testing is a really powerful thing. So let's talk about the testing sandwich. And this involves three steps when you're covering a single topic. So you take a topic, for example, cardiology or the pathophysiology of the kidney or neurology or psychiatry or statistics, whatever you want to study. And then you break it down into study blocks. And these study blocks involve firstly doing some pre-study questions. And typically I recommend short answer questions at this stage. Then after you've done the short answer questions or the pre-study questions, move on to studying the topic. So this involves reviewing or reading through a set of notes, actively trying to take out the key facts that you need to remember. And then after you've reviewed and studied those set of notes, moving on to the third part of the testing sandwich, which is the post-study questions. And this is typically multiple choice questions, which contextualize that information uh, so that you can actually use what you've just learned to try and apply it to a clinical scenario, for example. So in order to implement the testing sandwich, you need three things. Firstly, a set of pre-study questions, which typically I recommend short answer questions. Secondly, you need a set of notes that you can review in say an hour or an hour and a half. And thirdly, you need a set of multiple choice questions or post-study questions. And I recommend doing about 25 to 50 questions before and after studying the topic. And I've used this testing sandwich effect really effectively, actually from my A-levels. And I implemented it at A-levels and got 100% in a lot of my A-level exams. And then I didn't implement it through a lot of medical school and then did for my finals and ended up graduating with honours. So it's worked really, really well for me. And I'd love to hear uh, if anybody implements it, what kind of results you get. But this is the way I would recommend testing yourself um, in order to really solidify the information that you're learning uh, so that it stays with you long term. And also so that you know where you're up to and um, before you study the topic and after studying. The third principle that I would give you is number three, work fast and get the job done. One of the issues that people raise when I talk about the testing sandwich is that it sounds quite overwhelming and quite daunting. What I'm asking you to do is go through questions on cardiology, then study the whole of cardiology, 
and then some more questions. It seems like a lot to get through. And one thing to remember is Parkinson's law, which states that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. And what this means is whatever time you set aside for a particular task, you will fill that time completing that task. So when it comes to studying cardiology, you could spend three weeks trying to cover everything possible in cardiology and really get paranoid about missing any particular details. Or you can set yourself an hour and a half and read through a set of notes on cardiology. For example, the section on cardiology from Zero to Finals or in the Zero to Finals book. And you can definitely get through this in about an hour and a half if you just read through it and keep pushing forwards. And don't worry too much about missing small details. And the reason I would suggest not worrying so much about the small details is that you're going to repeat this process again and again. So in subsequent repetitions of going through this content, you're likely to pick up details that you missed the first time. And actually, any time that you read through something once, for example, if you spent three weeks going through cardiology, over time, after a month or so, you're likely to have forgotten more than 80% of what you read in that single time going through it. So if you spent three weeks going through cardiology and your exam is three weeks later, you'll probably have forgotten a lot of what you went through. And it's only if you repeatedly go through something that you'll remember it long term, which is why spending an hour and a half going through it now and then an hour and a half going through it in a week's time is better than spending the entire week going through it uh, just once. This leads me on to the fourth principle, which is spaced repetition. And spaced repetition is quite a buzzword in learning medicine at the moment. I've seen it come up in uh, quite a lot of situations where people are talking about doing spaced repetition. And the spacing effect is a very well-established psychological phenomenon that basically says if you're going to study something multiple times, for example, you're going to study cardiology three times, you're better spacing out those study uh, sessions rather than clumping them together. So for example, let's say you studied cardiology today and then you studied cardiology in a week and then after a month, that content that you've studied and that learning is going to stay with you longer and you're going to retain that information better than if you studied cardiology today, tomorrow and then the next day. So spacing out when you study a particular topic is a very effective way of retaining that information much more long term. And at some point, I'm going to do a full video all about the spacing effect. So if you want to stay up to date with that, do hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification button so that you find out when that comes out. The other important aspect here is repetition. Really, if you want to get something to stick in your mind, the only way to do that is to go through it multiple times. If you just cover something once, it's not going to stick for very long. But if you keep going through something over and over again, that's when it really sticks with you long term. So repetition is key. And that leads me on to the fifth and final principle, which is track your learning. Tracking your learning might be the most important thing that you can do. I've made an entire video all about tracking your learning that goes into real detail about why you should track your learning, all the benefits of tracking your learning, and also how to track your learning. But essentially what it involves is you make a chart to show all of the topics you need to cover for your exams, and then you make a note of the pre-study questions uh, scores that you get and the post-study question scores that you get and also when you studied that topic. And this way you can track how well you're doing on the tests and also effectively space out your study sessions so that you're not studying them all in one clump, you're spacing out them out effectively over time. It also allows you to see where your strengths and weaknesses are so that you can focus your energy on the areas that you're weakest at and make sure that you cover everything enough times in preparation for your exams. There are some free tracking resources that you can download at zerodefinals.com slash tracking. And that's the end of this video. They're my five principles and my five tips that you can implement straight away to start preparing for medical exams more efficiently and more effectively. And hopefully it makes it feel more satisfying when you're preparing for your exams. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then consider liking the video. Please do leave a comment and let me know if it was helpful. And if you have any questions or any topics that you really want me to cover, 
Um, I'm really open to suggestions and I'd be interested to know what things you're struggling with so I can see if I have any ideas to help. And consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification to see when the new videos come out. And I'll see you for the next one. Take care.